Welcome back to the LCS. We got 100 Thieves TL heading on into the draft here for game number two. We're going to be covering here at the lounge with the yep. boys. With the boys. My favorite chat from the previous game was when APA said, never played versus Talia? Question mark. Can't dodge, <laughs> oh my, Can't dodge my W? Question mark. Oh my god, he's unleashed. That one, <laughs> that one was getting pretty aggressive. Uh, obviously, he always has felt a big conversation surrounding his champion pool, mm -hmm. even from his teammates <laughs> in past years. Ex teammates, and so yeah, ex teammates, exactly. <laughs> and so you know that that like that's something that really struck a chord. And they immediately first picked the Talia, so I'm yeah. glad uh, I picked the right chat. That champ was pretty good. Yeah, maybe we should grab that. Looking pretty good. Honestly, Quid and River are both really good Talia players, so this is for sure flex pick. Some teams, not so much. And something we were talking about was we didn't really like the draft from 100 Thieves. I do think TL, every single game, we're just going to see them draft for scaling, for 5v5. That's just going to be what they do. 100 Thieves putting both Sniper and River on tanks, yeah. that is not the way to roll over a team in the early game. And I think that's what 100 yeah. Thieves wants to try to get done. They want to be more aggressive. They want to have these guys on Playmakers. When Sniper is getting ahead, this team does well. When River is crushing it in the early game, this team does well. They need that kind of injection. Yeah. If they're going to pick a Maokai, that better be going to Ayla. Uh, yeah. that, that is not a not river. So, uh, but this one, same thing uh, for Team Liquid with the Zyra Khan. This time answered with the Kaiser Nautilus instead. Yeah, that was the balling that I expected in game one. They went and ended up going towards the Jinx itself. And so, okay. yeah, I, I really like uh, Kaiser Nautilus, especially with the Talia that they have here. So it's pretty scrappy. It's right down what 100 Thieves usually play. Yeah, I feel like this is just the most classic matchup. Like, this is way back to tradition. The origins of 80 carries. Kaisa uh, versus Zaya matchup. Speaking of the classic, mm. Ziggs on three. It's an APA Ziggs game. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, if it's going to be actually like on hit Kaisa or if it's going to be AP, that more AP style build. Mm -hmm. There's so many different builds that people are doing. There's the Shiv Kraken Nashers. There's, uh -huh. you know, like Ludens. Plus, I, uh, plus I feel like, like especially if I was the one playing Talia, I would rather my Kaisa went uh, AD on hits uh, rather than the poke build. Uh, especially because we do have a Nautilus here too, so I feel like there's so many burst opportunities and dive opportunities. That being said, you're diving into a Ziggs and a Zaya. The Team Liquid, pretty smart, you know, counter dive setup for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. It is going to be pretty difficult actually going into the Zaya. We have to see what the rest of the team comp is for TL. If they say squishy, I think the AP build can be pretty damn good. Um, but, yeah. you know, because I can, can really struggle against poke and range. Yeah. And I don't know if, if they're going to grab some sort of poke or anything like that from Sniper. Like if Sniper was playing Jace top and they have Jace plus the AP Kaisa build, I think that can be really strong. I think if it's solo poke, then I like it to be more on hit. The Yone ban is interesting because they already had the Talia picked up, but they're expecting it to be like a jungle Talia, so the flex is there. Mm -hmm. um, also, even though I don't expect to be a top lane uh, Yone, that's something that Sniper has played a lot of. Um, so I think it's a smart ban and a good reminder that the Talia could just literally go to river. Yeah, I mean, even though all these last four look like top lane bans, Quid also played Aatrox <laughs> as a counter, so uh, he's definitely been a very versatile uh, mid laner. Making uh, Sante a lot stronger here. I was going to say, I feel like it might just be Sante and four, even though, you know, they could just go jungle just because it feels like pretty highly prioritized. Nice. Volibear. So this could be Volibear top or jungle. Of course, we did see the drain tank build come out uh, from Whippo last week, yeah. the week before. Didn't actually look very tanky in that one, but it is a pretty strong build. So, and it is a flex pick. And I always love that if you can do that on four, because it doesn't really give much away to 100 Thieves. Only one that I've seen actually go top lane with the Vala Bear has been Whippo, but I think if you're trying to run that logic, oh, it's the it's River, the river J4. Oh, it's back the to the river classic, J4. back to the classic River Jarvan. We went from Maokai to Jarvan. Yep. I am so ready for this. You're gonna get way more action from him early on. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a mid laner that can pair up pretty well with it also. Yeah, for sure. A Jax, uh, okay. I was expecting that if it was gonna be a Cassante, because it, it looked like a Cassante trap, that you would just throw the Volibear top lane, but it's probably gonna be a Volibear jungle uh, for Umpty. Just have to figure out what the pick is going to be versus Sniper's Jax. This is one of the things that I don't love about drafts from TL is often impact his last picking and he's just going to do something that isn't actually going to get him Hi. much of a lane advantage, right? That's kind of the prior, uh, problem there, I think, for TL. As we see Courage there in the crowd cheering on 100 Thieves. Got to pass his first 100 Thieves win. Now we're going to get to see if he can watch 100 Thieves win in the in the series uh, as it is Cassante locked in last. Don't love it as a fifth pick, uh, fifth pick counter pick. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of it either. 
Um, overall, at least they have a pretty beefy front line and a generally safe back line with Ziggs and Zaya. So I still like Team Liquid's comp, just not as much as the last one. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, I, I kind of like it uh, actually. I, I don't know. I think the biggest improvement is on the Hundred Thieves side. They have so many more weapons yes. this time around. I feel like they'll actually get to fight. But let's get over to the casters right now. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Welcome back, everybody, for game number two about to launch here. Jat, Emily, how are we feeling about the draft changes going into this one? We've got some classics here. We've got the mm -hmm. Quid Talia. We've got the River Jarvin, something I've kind of been wanting to see him pull out after seeing it in um, LEC primarily, but we've seen it here and there globally as well. Uh, and then the APA Ziggs. His only loss yeah. on this champion was actually 200 Thieves in their week one, day one matchup. And for me, if this adaptation doesn't work for 100 Thieves, it's looking incredibly grim for the rest of the series because they still devoted three bands directly at Yon's AD carry pool. They still gave over the Zaya. They think that Talia was the problem, not the Zaya Rakan or the bot bands to the bot lane. But if this doesn't work, I think 100 Thieves is really low on options for the rest of the series. I'm excited, man. Hopefully we get a more explosive early game in this one. Last game was uh, pretty fast overall in terms of the time that it took for the Nexus to boom. But like we were talking about even in that game, for the first 10, 12 minutes, there wasn't a whole lot happening. And then it just went a thousand miles an hour. Exactly, just massive acceleration from 12 minutes to 23 minutes, an incredibly fast game. APA also walking away from that one with a purpose. Drops his few thoughts in the all chat at the end and then runs off stage. We'll see if we can carry that <laughs> momentum towards this game. Yeah, and I think uh, as we see, Core just asked Ben Scarin for 16th uh, LCS all time games played. Um, a lot of games. I think the big thing from this 100 Thieves comp is kind of like you said, Jat, where they have a lot of playmaking that they like to do. All right, and as we're waiting on that playmaking to start, we're going to toss to Azale. He's standing by for an interview with 100 Thieves coach Golden Glue. All right, thanks, Flowers. So talk me through what went wrong game one and what the adaptations are for game two. Yeah, so game one, it kind of felt like we saw a little bit of the stage shooters. I think we ended up getting kind of pressured bot lane. We got hit by uh, like Rakan Ws, and then we kind of just, the game blew up by that bot fight. So I think this this game, we picked a little bit more aggressive mid jungle where they they can fight more. And I think Quick can have a bigger impact in the game and we'll see how it goes. All right, well, thank you very much. Back to you guys at the desk. I think the mid jungle is the key mm -hmm. there. Even though Maokai Jace is a good mid jungle duo, it's not Quid River. I need to read this chat. Uh, <laughs> Scrim Hunter Thieves, yeah. Camera Stage Hunter uh, Stage Lord. I'll pick up that point though, because like I said, uh, when we tossed a Golden Glue, I do think this team does the best with mid jungle making plays early, right? Like mm -hmm. they really rely on Quid's playmaking, they really rely on River's early pathing. This is a champion that he's so well known for to the point where we once made a graphic where it was just J4 with his head on it and did not call him River for a game. We called him Jarvin. Um, so I think this is a composition that 100 Thieves should be very comfortable piloting. Yeah, I do wonder though if they're gonna be able to punish Ziggs though. Because yep. I don't think APA needs to shove. He can very easily just clear waves at his turret. Also, if he does get dove on by everyone, he's going to just ult himself and deal a significant amount of damage in the fight, which in theory, Yon would then be able to clean up. So I think both of them are defaulting to comfort, which is really interesting since the very first time they played this year was Oof. the APA Ziggs comfort pick and the Sniper Riven comfort pick. So some similarities here in game two of their first playoff series against each other. It's three minutes and Umti is in your jungle. And now he's gonna wrap around to see if he can't get something on Quid. Very With the flash. 300 HP, there's the Umti oh, flash to the engage spot. Sky Splitter's oh. not gonna find it, but first blood goes to APA. He flashes to get in range. They've got the damage they need. Back up at the top side, the impact and sniper 1v1. Heating up a little bit, but not going all the way yet again. Both of them down low. I wonder if the junglers are gonna go there next, but man, back in mid. Ooh. That was the story beautifully done from Umpty and APA. Yeah, and we talked about early playmaking. It was Umpty on this Volibear, right, going bot side that we called out in their last uh, best of five against Dignitas. Um, I do, <laughs> as we see APA coming up with the scrim, 100 key. Uh, that's great setup for APA in mid. And I also appreciate that you can literally set your clock at like three minutes mm -hmm. and Umpty is doing something in the opponent's jungle. Yeah, and he's the one, even though he was down one camp, that really 
uh, benefits APA, because even if he has to play the rest of the lane phase conservatively, he's going to be hitting his item power specs at the right moment now with that 400 gold injection. My favorite style of jungling in League of Legends <laughs> is PvP at level 3. Once you have all of your abilities, it's time to start playing against the enemy team, and Umphy seems to subscribe to the same ideology, especially on a champ like Volibear, who's so good in the early game, I love yeah. to see it. Yeah, and it gets banned so often against Team Liquid for that reason, but in this series, Hunter Thieves is throwing all their bans towards bottom lane, and let's see how much this game mirrors last game, because you can see in the bottom lane already, they are shoved up, they want to be able to reset, because then Core would run out and go towards the Grubs once again. Let's see, yep. though, if 100 Thieves can delay them enough in this recall, but that's what I expect to happen. Umpty's already bought, and River's not even in position to contest Grubs. Yeah, River just farming up those Krugs, but the Ward's gonna see exactly what he's doing. He's so Umpty get. knows yep. that they've got the guaranteed 2v1 up here. Sniper will try to get away from it. Flashes into the brush, wanted to juke him a little bit. Oh, Remember yeah. that Umpty does not have a flash to follow because he already used it to make the first blood play mid. And Impact not connecting on the third and Toflo strike means Sniper survives it. Yeah. yeah. We will get the flash, but again, I really have enjoyed as we see those grubs get started up, River will be able to respond. And Core JJ didn't make it back to base though, so Umpty's gonna have to run here. Okay, Umpty trying to uh, try to tank these guys up for a little bit, but that might not be the right play. Quid's making his way over. The bear is left for dead. Meanwhile, bottom lane, the 2v2 scrap still going. Umpty just trying to take a grub with him, make sure that he gets something. But it will be a 2 to 1 grub count favoring 100 Thieves, I would think. Okay, uh, for a second, I thought a random bomb was gonna steal it. That would have been wacky. But yeah, 2 to 1, grubs favor 100 Thieves. They get their first kill, they tie that up. They do not want to allow Team Liquid to keep building early leads off of Umpty. Bear. And that's exactly like you said, Jet, right? Where Core was not able to rotate up ideally like they would have wanted, uh, yeah. get that reset and have him there for that fight. And then APA was not really able to get in around the backside mm -hmm. of the pit either. Um, so that fight ends up going 100 Thieves way. It's pretty tragic too, because APA was level six. I thought maybe Team Liquid would get a little more aggressive, but mm -hmm. I think clearly once Umpty was in the pit, someone in their comms just said, leave because they, they just didn't all that early I, I think there was a small chance they win that fight uh if they commit to it but the timing just didn't sync up and i think they expected river to concede those grubs so got a little bit confused there and now umpty is just back on objectives once again yeah umpty going after that first drake Alo's gonna see him so they know that team liquid is at least beginning this attempt river is nearby but he does not seem to want to try to contest this at least right now core jj and yan also both making their way down to the site and it doesn't look like hundred thieves will be ready to contest this because Meech is still all the way back in base coming down bottom lane Another Sky Splitter just to keep chunking the Drake down, keep this pace up. Even if they don't have Zion Rakan standing there beating it down with him, Umpty has absolutely no danger whatsoever taking this. Volibear stays so healthy, clearing out these neutral objectives. And there it is, first Drake for TL. Yeah, and I think you could tell because Talia was also resetting off of that while Ziggs would have theoretically been there in time as we see a little scrapping bot side. Yeah, the dredge line finds Core JJ. River was coming around. He has level six. The Cataclysm yeah. on the Jarvan makes these ganks so much stronger. It is one of the advantages 100 Thieves currently enjoy is that Umpty is only level five. River having the ult is a big difference maker if they end up in a scrap with both junglers present. And I'm just really excited to see River's Jarvan again in these team fights. He's been such a signature Jarvan player. Yeah. And I think one of his biggest strengths this year was his ability to team fight on anything. Mm -hmm. Just targeting out opponent carries so efficiently. I need to see if he can do that against Yon and APA because he's applying a lot of pressure to the bot lane as we speak, taking the Gromp, meaning Team Liquid can't keep control of that bush, and keeping Yon from getting significant amounts of farm. We'll see. That's still. They have the ulti for the Zaya, so now the engage is on the Rakan. Ayla finds him again. Beautifully done from 100 Thieves there. It took him a while, but River was patient. Yeah. He got mm -hmm. the Gromp in the meantime, and then all it takes is one hook, one kill. Team Liquid now behind in the kill count. I do think that's a bit of a mistake from Core JJ. I think they could yeah. assume that River was taking the Gromp. There's a reason for him to stick around that profits him. So the fact that if he is there, you were dead, I think they needed to delay that at least another wave before they tried to retake that bush. Mm -hmm. But like, insane ward control on this bot side. Yep. Triple control wards in those three brushes. I, that to me is the biggest adjustment that 100 Thieves has made going into this game too, is just even more for bot side control. Yeah, as we saw, I think the other big thing is just getting River involved where he can make an impact, right? Where it's not necessarily just, not that 
I think menu waves are very important, uh, but also <laughs> not just resetting the wave, not just allowing someone to get a back, but also being able to get a kill, steal a little bit of the enemy's carries and be able to set up bot lane and do well. Top lane's kind of just looking like this again, though. There's not a whole lot going up in top lane. I don't feel like we're probably going to get a ton. One of the big differences I am looking at this time is just some of the scaling potential. Last game, you know, we had the incredible Renekton plays coming out of Impact. This time, he's on the Cassante, but Jax on Sniper. Never mind, it's not even about that anymore. Man, Meech gets another free kill onto Umpty. The bear got caught. They're picking up what you're talking about, Emily. They know that Umpty <laughs> likes to be in the enemy jungle, so why not just be ready for him? And also, they have the tools to be ready for him. Because yep. you're not bursting someone like that with Maokai Jace, but you are able to burst them with this team composition. Anyone CCs, Kai'Sa can fly in, get that execute. They're going to be trying to pull off plays like that, I think, more so than traditional. 5v5 team fighting, that's how they're going to try and pull ahead in this game is just picks. And it'll be really interesting to see if they are able to get that five grub kind of spike off yeah. of this. Yeah, true. Sniper rotating down into the river to make sure he's ready to back up his jungler. Yes. Wants to clear out the ward at the same time, couldn't quite get it. Impact did move down and contest that, but Rivers already got those first two grubs. Now the dive coming out bottom lane. Yon and Core JJ are going to start it off, and Umpty's ready to follow it up. Dropping the tower aggro with the Zaya ulti. Yon did not want to end up in a bad spot there. And Impact's the one now in a bad spot. Top side, River gets it done yet again. You can see the Cataclysm was used for that as Team Liquid's gonna try to rack up some turret plate money in the bottom lane to make up for it as Quid hits Seismic Shovel on APA. Chunks him by about half, but no real kill threat. This game's heating up, yeah. but there is one big uh, pattern in this series is when the second set of grubs are up, Team Liquid kills Meech. That's happened in both <laughs> games, and they're so willing to pull the trigger on that dive. The counterplay, though, was bigger this time. Oh, oh Impact that goes in the all out. Sniper survives with the Counter-Strike for now, but Impact just dashes back on top of him, shuts him down. Yeah, and I think, I feel like the junglers got the message for this game as we see uh, Impact getting a solo kill for himself, but also just both teams have been w way more involved with their yeah. junglers mm. going towards their lanes. We see more scrapping over Vision. Yeah, I I'll also say that, you know, Maokai versus Rel is going to be less exciting than Volibear versus Jarvan. True. Yeah. So the, Very true. the airplane is definitely helping the pilots be more aggressive here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it makes sense. There's nothing wrong no, with that statement. Just no, no one ever I, uses it. Like, yeah, I, they're never like the archer or the arrow. But I just decided to mix them up. What do you no, 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 no. It's it's good. Yeah. I just wasn't expecting the airplane analogy. <laughs> it's whatever flops into your mind first. No, Fair. no. I can I, I can respect the creativity, man. That's that's your process. I respect that. Core JJ and Yon have to respect River's presence down here in this bot side river. The Jarvan has been a part of all four kills so far for 100 Thieves, whereas on the other side, Umpty is 0-2-1. and one. So that mm. early game engine not quite coming online for TL, whereas 100 Thieves, I talked about it a little bit last game, this is the kind of start that they need to have to be successful, is getting River out there, getting him involved. There is a ward from TL on this Drake, so they can see what 100 Thieves are doing. Four TL players nearby, 400 Thieves players nearby, no teleport available for either one of the top laners. River and the Thieves still trying to put the work in on the Drake. They got it down to 3k. It's Mega gonna Inferno be Bomb didn't do a whole lot. Weaver's Wall thrown out to try to keep TL away. River secures the Drake and Umpty is dead immediately. This bear is going on the endangered species list as River stays alive and he does score JJ. APA stuck in the Cataclysm as they let Quinn chase down Yawn. A little bit more damage is all they need, but Yawn finds the wall looking to stay alive and Quinn snipes him out. Now he's gonna find the shovel on APA as well. They know how to lead W works and Meech gets the shutdown. And this is exactly why you don't give Quinn to Leah, right? Because she just has, I mean, Talia is just generally strong, but he is such an excellent playmaker on this pick. As we see the wall go down, isolates Umti. River is immediately on him, and Meech is in there. And also, just River, not only is he using his EQ for the smite secure, he's also using it for the initiation. That's just such perfect Jarvan play. The back end of this fight, you can see Yon doing everything he can, but it ended up being a three before because Umpty again didn't get to contribute. Perfect seismic shove at the end to get more gold onto Meech, which is just going to increase his assassination. <laughs> and we're oh back. man, Golden Glue's excited. Sniper's trying to run. Umpty chases him down and just bites a hole through him. 
Oh, I wanted more go. coach reaction yeah. there. Yeah, Same. that was great. <laughs> I wanted to see where Grayson was going. It looked like his head was about to explode. 100 Thieves is right in the 100, or Golden Blue is right in the 100 Thieves roller coaster for this one. He is, he is just, uh, he's having a great time. 100 Thieves now starting up the Rift Herald here. They did get four grubs earlier, but they left the last one because of just everything that was happening around the map. So they did not hit the five grub break point. They're 500 gold ahead. It doesn't look like Team Liquid is going to challenge for this Herald either. No, and I think Team Liquid right here is going to try and get some turret gold on his Ziggs. This is the stage yeah. of the game where they're trying to play as much macro as possible. Uh, a lot of times in their Ziggs games, APA will pick up uh, basically enough to get to his two and three item spikes just by taking these side lane turrets. Core JJ, you can see already shadowing in the bottom there as they're kind of giving up the Rift Herald. But like, what's the purpose of a Rift Herald is to get a turret. Team Liquid is just getting it here. So I think even though this game has been incredibly spicy and a lot of kills so far, it might slow down for the next four or five minutes as APA okay. tries to clear these turrets. Yeah, I'll be looking for TL to stick APA inside lanes. Ziggs with, against turrets is just so oh, get deadly it. as he's tanking. <laughs> oh, he messed that up, actually. Yeah. He thought an auto would get it for him. Yeah, he thought he's really close to the threshold, and he thought the auto attack would yeah. work, but the backdoor protection makes Ziggs auto attacks without much AP just do nothing. As here comes your Rift Herald charge over in mid. River and Meech really would like to be able to take this out, but even with the damage over time from the Grubs, it's not quite there. So first turret ultimately does go over to APA, who is going to use his teleport to get out because he knows that the 100 Thieves hit squad is coming after him. Yeah, and I mean, that was also a really good response from 100 Thieves, right? Put this Herald mid, mm -hmm. try to shove it down, uh, especially when that turret didn't go down exactly as TL had planned. As they take it down now, uh, that should open up the map a little bit more for them. Yeah, mid turret, definitely more highly valued by pro teams than bot turret, even if you got more gold for bot with the first turret bonus. So nicely done by then. And we haven't really talked about this top lane much because Sniper's been able to get two kills, but that's a 50 CS gap. Yeah. yeah, I think we can't ignore it for any longer. There's been a <laughs> lot going on in that top lane where Impact is winning the wave by wave trading. Sniper is still in the game though because of the two kills, only a thousand gold down, but that could be a factor later. Oh, Quid getting jumped on by Corrin Umpty, but where's the rest of the damage? There it arrives in the form of Impact as Sniper's trying to get away from APA. Quid still cutting out for now as Meech jumps into the fight with the ghost ready to go. Sniper's fighting back and Meech goes on a killing spree. Impact finds one in return and Quid and Umpty are traded back and forth. Oh, APA no. manages to shut down Meech, and Team Liquid loses impact to Sniper. It's a two for two trade, a bloody scrap in the bottom lane. Ayla's still seeing if maybe there's an angle here, but the problem is he doesn't have a lot of damage and Sniper doesn't have a lot of health. 100 Thieves are just gonna walk it off. And that was no yawn involved in that yep. fight. That was all impact. He dove deep to get that first kill. I think the fact, like there was a moment there where there were only three TL people on screen and 500 Thieves people on screen. So the fact that they pulled that off. Wow, their Zaya is deep in yep. the mid lane turret. They're going for what you call a fast play, trying to make this happen before the team arrives. But 100 Thieves actually all get there. So the power of the Cassante with the 50 CS advantage just soloing Quid in the face of River turns this around. And then APA getting more crucial gold, plus 450 onto Ziggs. He's going to be a problem in this game. Yeah, he's 3 1 and 0. Oh. He's, uh, again, like, what I'm really looking for from TL as we see him. Oh, River trying to find the engage on Yon, but Yon with a beautiful ult, he counters it. And now Core wow. JJ's the one to get the kill credit as River took a one-way trip in, trying to find that engage. Now Ayla's looking to follow up here, but they gotta be careful. Volibear and the rest of the Team Liquid roster can all walk away. Man, this game is scrappy. 18 kills in 17 minutes and 50 seconds. And before that fight broke out, what I was going to talk about was how APA was just going to go push top, right? Because what TL want to do is, again, get the Zig inside lanes, mm -hmm. get turrets taken as many as possible. Zigs alone with a turret is not usually a good time for that turret. Um, and after that fight, TL are now able to rotate towards the Drake as well. Two to one over 100 Thieves and Drakes. And I think because APA has generated so much gold for himself off those turrets, 8,200 gold at 18 minutes, two core items completed, first player in the game to do so with a very high-paced game. Uh, it's gonna be about APA actually carrying these team fights in the mid game, not yet Yawn. So look to see if Ayla or Sniper or anyone can get some CC on APA, then Meech would fly in for the assassination on the Kai'Sa because I think if they fail to do that, Team Liquid's gonna have a lot more damage in these team fights. 
<laughs> I love that. Hit him with the flag, do 20 damage, uh, but peg a frog, walk away. Man, that's great. <laughs> All right, so we're just about to the point of the game where Baron's gonna come online. This, of course, can make a game that's already this snappy there that much more go. dangerous. River wants the Cataclysm, and Yon wants nothing to do with it. Flashes immediately over the wall, not only avoiding the lockdown, but avoiding the damage of the Cataclysm entirely. That's worth it, though, right? Yeah. No yeah. flash, Cataclysm can still catch the Zaya in the next fight. There's already two Drakes for Team Liquid. They're gonna wanna move to Soul Point soon. And to me, Team Liquid actually has a lot of the momentum in this game, already being up 1-0 in the series and APA having yet another pretty good game when a lot of people thought this was going to be a massive just mismatch between Quid and APA. But so far, APA definitely having a big series. Ayla was looking for something there as the Ziggs clears yet another one. And let's see. Can There's he... that lockdown you were talking about. APA's at half HP, but they haven't killed him yet. Sniper into the back line. They Five gone. Yep. The Zaya's out of the picture. And River gets the shutdown on APA. It's three dead bodies in Team Liquid jerseys. And 100 Thieves with the Undertakers. Now Impact can't even survive. Quid gets another. It's four traded for Mage. Remember what I said a minute ago about how Baron's almost on the rim? Well, 100 Thieves got the timing perfect. And remember what I said about APA having another game? That, my friend, is a caster curse. So Team Liquid <laughs> do clear that turret, but they pull off the combo onto APA. Mage flies in, does a bunch of damage. The 20-minute Baron could slingshot them ahead, but Umpty has Smite, Flash, and all. He might go for it. He's All a bear right. in a dream. Yeah, he's not had a great game so far. No vision. This is Volley Bear <laughs> Redemption Arc the or Volley Bear vision. Clown Shoes. Ah. Which one will it be? He jumps in. Humpty over the wall. No. Will not secure it as Team Liquid shows up wait, to try wait. to punish them for the Baron take. APA got the teleport angle to try to get in there and pick up some of these kills. Yon's also arrived. The shutdown for the Zaya kills the Nautilus. Sniper's trying to get away. River doing the same. They split up. They go opposite directions, hoping only one of them will get caught. Ooh. Sniper dies, but it is still an execution, so no money to the side of Team Liquid. 100 Thieves end up losing a couple there. Yes, they will get the kill back onto Umpty, but critically, they secure the Baron. Yeah, and here as we go back to the fight that kind of set it all up, APA here, when, once they immediately get onto him, does exactly what you said he would, Jat, in terms yeah. of, okay, I'm going to bomb as many people on the back line as possible. I already know I'm going down, but this was really well done from 100 Thieves. And I think the biggest part of this fight is actually how they just absolutely murdered Yon in the back line. Mm -hmm. Quit Sniper, both flew in from flanks, got him down as well. And then this is interesting. Umpty was actually just trying to buy as much time as possible for the Ziggs to arrive because Team Liquid was thinking, if we don't steal it, we want to wipe him. 1,500 damage to zero, almost impossible for him to steal that one. Yeah. One of the cruelest jokes in the league is when your support has a bad <laughs> <laughs> So Golden Glue is relieved, uh, but really crucial that 700 gold additional didn't go over to Yon at the end of that fight. Really mm -hmm. smart by Sniper to get that execute. Yon already got the 450 from picking up Ayla. The extra 700 would have been like an 1,100 gold injection onto Zaya, almost yeah. would have been validated the Baron. They do not get that though, and Team Liquid is always looking to make plays. Quid managing to get away with a Weaver's Wall there as Team Liquid was leading the charge towards him. It was Umpty who wanted to lock him down, but just couldn't quite get the distance he needed. Meanwhile, I talked about it just very briefly earlier. Sniper set up to be a split-pushing menace yep. this game on yeah. the Jax. He's got six kills. He's got his second major item completed in the Sundered Sky alongside that Trinity Force now. This guy is rapidly evolving into a problem. Yeah, as we see him TPing topside to actually go get that turret uh, and potentially join up with the rest of his team if they want, although they're kind of just yeah, I, I mean, moving I mean, around mid. I think Sniper is just getting as much gold yeah. as he can. River could pull the trigger at any moment, though, especially when Yon still doesn't have a flash if they've timed that. As soon as Yon's flash is back up, it almost gives Team Liquid an advantage for the next team fight because they have such good counter dive. If they're not instantly bursting the carries, I think Team Liquid would end up winning the fight. So they have to really be careful about this next initiation as the dragon is spawning soon and 100 Thieves want to take control of River. It's all 10 players in the mid lane. Impact's gonna be the target here with the very start from 100 Thieves, but Cassante's not usually a burstable opponent. 100 Thieves, they know that they chunked out that frontliner, but now they gotta be careful as Umpty looks for his own possible angle here, forces River back. That's a big part of the Jarvan engage not available. Nice bit of burst there onto Quid will force the Talia to make a recall. Core JJ wants to go in and he finds the lockup on the sniper and onto Ayla. Now the follow-up from TL isn't there for the damage here just yet, but River's looking for an angle into the back line. He drops the cataclysm, but Yon can't.
kills them off. Team Liquid still trying to fight and kite, and Sniper will not make it to him. The shutdown over to Yawn yet again. Team Liquid has found two, and they don't want to stop just yet. Off to the flash engage, and Meech gets the kill back. Hundred Thieves are turning it. Meech with the fancy feet. of impact and of the both. There's no at all how I thought that fight was going to go. What are the priorities of these teams, man? Because <laughs> that was a 1-0 death fight for Team Liquid where they can get the third Drake, but they go for more. Watching this again, you think it might be a bad start because APA completely misses his ultimate, but no one can actually get cleanly onto Yawn. Mm -hmm. River's too low by the time he ults in, so they burst him out. And then Cypher re-engages, but has absolutely no follow-up, so he too gives a big bounty over to Yawn. This is where Team Liquid could have backed up, but they want to go for the jugular. They go for Meech, but they all just fly through the Talia crap. They all die. <laughs> and then, because Meech lasts for so long on the backside, it ends up delaying Team Liquid and <laughs> Drake. That's the, why did they just fly mm. through the Talia crap we're, phase? We're, back, we're fighting so. again. Yeah, again. It's, it's time to fight for this dragon. That's the nice part about having the dragon still up. We get another fight for it. Core JJ looking for the grand entrance on Sniper. Ain't gonna find him. Dredge line connects onto Umpty, and they try to drop the Nautilus ulti on Yon, but he dodges it with Zaya's response. Whoa. Now, Core JJ with a nice double knockup as the hundred thieves are separated. Sniper and River are both very low, but it's Umpty who dies first. Quick goes on a killing spree, and River is traded back. But now, Core JJ is still trying to weak. Oh! Beautiful shutdown from Sniper, and Yon's out of the picture. Impact drops next, and hundred thieves are winning the fight. APA, the last little bit of damage left for Team Liquid. Him and Core have to run all the way home. Hundred Thieves win the scrap. These fights are so crazy. One thing we did bring up as Hundred Thieves end up taking out the Drake uh, and kind of tying up Drake's score is that Hundred Thieves were the bloodiest team in season, right? Yeah. TL, along with FlyQuest, because that five game series were the bloodiest team in playoffs as we see this fight go through. 35 kills in 26 minutes so far, and look at how low Quid gets on the engage, and then look at what Quid does for the rest of this fight. Because everyone dives in here, can't quite kill Sniper, and then watch as they try and chase down Sniper and Quid. Quid absolutely one-shots Yawn with the help of Meech. Gone as soon as he tries to step up. That was the turning point in this fight, maybe in the game, because 100 Thieves need this one. If they go down 2-0, it's incredibly hard to reverse sweep in the LCS. So super close game. And you know what? I think we're a few seconds away from another fight. Yeah. Let's go. I don't like breathing anyway. Let's just get back <laughs> You're to an another LPL fight. Now. Yeah, we're, we're going full LPL mode, baby. 3,000 gold lead for 100 Thieves. Team Liquid slipping a little bit here. They don't want to fall too much further behind because we're going to start getting to the point where you can't just take random YOLO fights in the middle of nowhere if you're 5,000 gold behind your opponents. River Jarvan definitely has been showing up so far here. He doesn't really have any of the kills himself, but he's got perfect 20 out of 20 kill participation. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. And I mean, Sniper down 50 CS in lane, but incredibly impactful in side lanes and in team fights. Not the type of game you'd expect from an LCS rookie. Normally, you think he's going to pop off in lane, have trouble the rest of the game, but that's not been the case for Sniper. River trying to just get a little vision here in the enemy jungle. You can see some wards placed down. Team Liquid doesn't have a whole lot of their own vision out on the map. Summoner's oh. Rift is pretty scary right now for TL. Yeah, let's just see them. Placing that pink, clearing out vision. There's the TP. All right, 100 Thieves making their move. River with the engage, doesn't want to commit the Cataclysm just yet. Finally drops it on Core and Omti. Meanwhile, Snipers arrive, oh, looking to press for the back line. Core JJ dies here for the very start. Ayla with the lockdown on Yon, who has to pop the ulti, getting away. Sniper versus Impact off of the left. Ooh. Meanwhile, huh? Omti's on the front line, but not for long. Sniper still staying alive, as Impact will not get the job done. And Meech finishes him off. It's another fight going the way of 100 Thieves. It's three more dead Team Liquid players, and it's another 100 Thieves Baron. That might push them over the edge in terms of their ability to just press go on anything and win the fight. Meech extremely strong at this point. The Baron's only going to add to that. You could see APA and Yawn had an incredibly hard time getting involved in that fight mm -hmm. whatsoever because the engage is just so snappy for 100 Thieves. Yeah, as soon as they're able to get in on fights, I do want people to pay attention to the Zig's ult, right? Because we're expecting this ult to kind of do a ton of damage, and it hasn't really been able to chunk out people yeah. the way that they would want. Uh, 
additionally, like, you want constant damage coming out from the poke from TL, but they just have not been able to do that with how, as we see the Ziggs ults come through, uh, how 100 Thieves have been able to split this up. Yeah, and it's because, like, when that Ziggs ult came out, there are 100 play Thieves players all across that line. Like, you're never hitting the whole team. They're almost diving separate targets uh, during the same team fight, so they're not grouping up for the AoE, and now they're just trying to push with this Baron. And this is much more what we expected from 100 Thieves, right? Like, yeah. this is the kind of comp that they're really, really comfortable piloting. It has a lot of engage. It has a lot of ways that you can pick apart 5v5 team fights and isolate carries, isolate the targets you want. We've already talked about how good River is at doing that. Um, I want to call out Quid in terms of everything that Talia does. He mm -hmm. set up such great zone control over the fight that mm -hmm. APA Ziggs has not been able to do on the side of TL. Sniper continuing the split push pressure off to the side, has the Sterics gauge to help him survive in these big fights that have just been happening non-stop so far this game. 38 kills in under 30 minutes. Sniper with enough pressure here, thanks to River making his entry guarantees that Impact does not want to stick around and continue trying to defend that tier two turret. 8,000 gold is yeah. the lead for 100 Thieves. And I think they're actually not going to try and get much more done with this Baron buff, even though there's a minute 20 seconds left. Umpty also never gives up, so if he sees a Play. He's just gonna fly in for it, but I think the smart play here for 100 Thieves is reset, go for the next Drake, and then start beating them with their wallets. That's four completed items on both Quid and Meech, compared to three completed items on APA and Yawn. So that's gonna give them a massive advantage in upcoming team fights, and also allow 100 Thieves, even though it feels like they're playing slow now, to continue to play fast. They know they have the items in hand, so if they see a play, they're just gonna go all in. Yeah, as we see TL trying to get some vision back on this top side. But another thing that you'd already pointed out earlier and is now even more true is that this entire map is just so scary uh, for TL at this yeah. point in terms of when they could potentially make a play. And we probably have a brief moment here to actually talk about the series because <laughs> of the 38 kills that have happened in 31 minutes. But this Drake is going to be given over to 100 Thieves, no contest from Team Liquid. Game one was very much about APA and Yawn showing up, yep. I would say, and then River not being able to have a big impact in this game. And we were discussing in between games, like, what is going on with River in the playoffs? Because he's played <laughs> so many champions that are just different styles than what he was dominating the LCS with. But back again in this game, it's like a very, very strong mid-jungle 2v2, and River can be very creative in the way that he plays team fights, And it just works so much better, even though Meech is having a pretty good game on Kai'Sa, but this, the start of everything, I feel like, has been this Jarvan and Talia making things happen. Yeah, it's the go button from River, and the, uh, to be fair, the go button from Ayla as well. Team Liquid wants to try to secure their red buff, and it looks like they will. That was closely yeah. contested, though. 100 Thieves are looking at every possible chance they might have to contest something and mm -hmm. catch Team Liquid for another fight. They know this game is now so far in their favor that Team Liquid has to pull off something crazy to win one of these. But I will also say it is kind of hard to break a Ziggs team. So yeah. <laughs> even though they're 10,000 gold ahead, if they dive wrong, that's actually how Team Liquid would be able to make it back into the game. Because at this point, if Quid dies, that's 1k gold. Yep. Right? Meech dies. That's 800 gold. That's really meaningful if it goes to the carry. So 100 Thieves does have to have a little bit of trepidation with how they approach. They might actually just wait for the next Baron, and we could have another small period of inaction. All right, the Ziggs effect sinking in, having to <laughs> really take a while Ooh. to break through this little oh, dude. Man. He's got three and a half items. He has the arm guard. Importantly, too, I feel like when arm guard isn't broken, it pretty much counts for a full item just because yeah. Stasis mm -hmm. is the most powerful active in League of Legends and proper timing of that thing could put APA in a really good spot in one of these fights. We know that River is always looking for both of these carries. APA, a much juicier target than a Yawn who can instantly pop the ulti to get away from some of that pressure. Mm -hmm. Impacts Cassante also. He's been trying, but he hasn't been able to go full god yeah. mode like he yeah. did in game number one. It's been tough when you're this far behind and you're the front line. You just end up having to play the punching bag a lot of times. Mm. He's looking. It's, it's Tilly and Jax are both split. Mid. Like one through one this late in the game gets you a lot of pressure, yeah. but actually exposes your mid lane very deeply. They might teleport in though. Like th this is this is a trap from someone. <laughs> River just yeah. went around behind them and cut the wave. That was the response. And I really like that from 100 Thieves. They're saying, all right, if you're just going to try to completely 
just torpedo mid lane. Well, we're going to remove all the firepower from the torpedo. No minions, no dice. The push ends, and the tier two turrets on both side lanes are out of the picture. 100 thieves, 8.6 thousand gold, really just trying to take control over the entirety of the map. Yeah, that was a smart response from River, and then obviously they have these side lanes set up so that TL have to respond, right? Um, and we'll see if 100 Thieves can continue to do this until Baron is up shortly as the next objective we can fight over, although Ayla's going in. Yeah, dredge line there starts off the fight, impacts over the front line, but the burst goes through on River. They drop him, and Core JJ is going to follow up engage. There's the Mega Infernal Bomb damage on the two, and Sniper has to get away. Thanks to the Steric's Gage, Meech goes on a killing spree, and he flies into the back line for the assassination. A double kill on Yon, and Core still trying to get away. Sniper kills him, and Meech escapes off to the side. Sniper and Ayla should have plenty of damage to get the job done, and Quinn's just waiting in the wings. Off the the last man standing in Team Liquid Colors and 100 Thieves are happy about how that one went. Yeah, and you can see even with, with the early river death, TL trying to get onto these 100 Thieves carries. Quid still lived yeah. and then just hid so that he continued to put down rocks on Talia and catch someone off guard. And then also I'd say Meech flying in to assassinate Yon was the cherry on top. This should be the game winning push for 100 Thieves. Yeah, um, is going to have to pull off something absolutely miraculous here and that is not something miraculous. He buys the Guardian Angel to just try to get enough time to defend this. But both Nexus turrets have already fallen. Core JJ ain't gonna stop it. It was an incredibly bloody game, but 100 Thieves are the ones standing when the dust settles. They'll tie up the series. And what a great response from 100 Thieves, right? With this composition that we said, this is much more their style. This is what got them into playoffs. Uh, it does change how we look ahead, right? Because yeah. Talia now becomes a massive draft priority in addition to the bans. And now River has pulled out the Jarvan as well, which you might have to add to the Lee Sin Vi combo that um, TL has been banning on red side. And I think this was such a crucial win for 100 Thieves, especially with the way they banned out all of Yon's 80 carries. They locked in the Xyrocon again. Having Meech have a big game on Kai'Sa mm -hmm. ended up being incredibly important. And just, we were all expecting a five-game series. Two games in, it looks exactly as predicted. <laughs> Banger incoming and in progress. Reminder, during the 2024 Spring Split, you can use your MasterCard to make a purchase from the in-client store and save your card on file to be entered for a chance to win a trip to a League of Legends event or a set of eight Player of the Week statues. Entry period is from March 2nd to March 24th, so wrapping up soon. But now we're going to head on over to the LCS Lounge to break down Game 2. Thank you, Flowers. Welcome to the LCS Movie Theater. Uh, I'm going to charge you guys for your tickets later. Uh, I don't Can think so, buddy. At least? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm working on the popcorn. Okay. We have popcorn. It just won't be delivered to you right now. Let's get into the game, though. This was a banger. I was a little worried after game number one that it might start to run away from us, but some big improvements, uh, I think, in draft, giving 100 Thieves a lot more weapons this time around. We did see Team Liquid starting out with some nice early game, though. That, Umpty. Was, the, that was the peak of the game for Umpty right there. Yeah, what's going on? We got uh, we no, to pause this going? one, actually. Pause this one. Wait a second. Umpty gets caught again. We don't have the actual he cot. He flash and ult. Here, everybody, arms up, arms up. You know the cot emo, right? <laughs> 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 this happened This happened so many times. All right, we can play it through now because <laughs> you know what's going to happen. That theater looks weird, but he for sure had both flash and ult. Yeah, your ult makes you immune to CC while you're in the air. They did nerf it a little bit, uh, but uh, and you have flash too, and you just got, uh, got hooked there. He also had died in the grubs and gave a kill over to Jax. Jax who where... was down 20 CS at yeah. that point. Yeah. This, this game was honestly shocking from MT. I felt like after that first gank, he misplayed almost every single fight the entire game, it felt like. It was, and yet, it was a weird and one. And yet they, were still, they were still winning in the early game until this fight right here. This one was so big. Quid right there. He got that seismic shove. There's a multiple times where he's getting these seismic shoves on uh, people chasing. Like that one, he could have just walked up and queued him, no? Yeah. Like that was like such a weird ult and he traps himself behind the wall. Because he traps himself behind the wall, then Impact has to chase Quid under the tower to actually get the kill. So he ends up dying. Like this could have been 
an absolute wipe, it felt like, for TL if they played some of these fights better. The jungle gap was actually enormous, yeah. but TL were still winning despite River going crazy in the early game a lot uh, of the, for a lot of it. A lot of the gold was on APA Ziggs. APA had quite a good game because how they set him up early, and I thought some of his team fights were great. But as you can see from this point forward, I thought Meech took over a yeah. lot of these team fights. This guy right here, where's the highlight thing? We need that circle. Here we go. Get in there. Uh, it's a little he late now because he's. them after the fight. <laughs> yeah. He took over a lot of these highlights as he dies in the middle. Here of we go. What? I got him. It was spotlight. Where'd he go? Where are we spotlighting? He's wrong place. He's down there. There he is. There he is. First time. First time spotlighter. Oh, wait. What's Core JJ doing? Some drunk spotlight. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're back on Meech. Oh. We're back on Meech. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> All right in the middle. Flashes out of the ultimate. <laughs> oh, this thing is fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Meech, Meech was really good in the team fight. Yeah. I, I think River clearly to me was the standout throughout the entire game because even when they were losing, I thought he was the one keeping them in it. But Meech was great in team fights. Quid had some big moments. Um, I thought this was a much sloppier game from TL than the first one. Obviously, yeah, I think MT played really bad, but there was also some moments, even in that, that final fight, yeah. where they overchase in what was a winning fight into the Talia. They get multi man flicked in. That kind of turned what was a one fight for TL into a lost one and the game ending. So definitely a game that I think Umti will want back and, and probably TL will want back too. And in some ways, you can rationale and be like, guys, we had a lead with how poorly we were playing, like, or at least how poorly Umti was playing on Volibear. You can at least come back and say, the, the comp still works. Like, we mm -hmm. still played well in the early game around that mistake. We can still probably run it back. So I'm expecting a run back fully. Also, worth noting, uh, he was... 5-1 and one on the Ziggs coming into this. His only one loss was the first game of the season mm -hmm, against mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. And now just picked up a second loss on we it. We can't blame him. He was having a good game. He no, was playing no, well. I, he I, was... Thought, I thought he was playing well. I'm yeah. not blaming him. I'm just saying this is the only team that's actually been able to deal with it. True. The All Ziggs right. Destroyers. Well, 100 Thieves have tied up the series on the Rift. But last week, Emily put both their synergy and their drawing skills to the test off the Rift. Take a look. Welcome to the first ever and potentially last ever episode of Paint My Life For Real or Draw My Life For Real. I'm joined by Awa and Sniper. He gets 60 seconds to draw what is ever on one of these cards. Are you ready for your first card? Yeah, I'm more than ready. It'll All be right. easy. It'll be easy, okay. I'm going to read your mind. Oh, uh, wait, hold up, hold up. Wait, how the frick do I draw this kid? <laughs> uh, it's adorable. I got you. Don't look at this, okay? I like messed up at first. Look at this one right here. Okay, so look at this. This is the one. <laughs> no, I solo bolo. Solo bolo. Solo bolo. Yeah, I'm going to say that. Fiora. No. Okay, the so sword is the champion, and why is why Aatrox? Down to you. Bro. Hey, it's not Jax, because Jax has a staff. Riven. Nah. Bro. Jax has a staff? I thought you had a sword. <laughs> sword? Bro, oh. bro, no, no. You really didn't know that Jax had a staff. No. I thought you had a sword the entire time. I'm not even joking. Oh, he does the thing where he's like, reason. imagine if I had a real weapon. Does it? <laughs> Oh, oh bro, shit. oh my god, okay. Pressure's on, come on. Bro, what the frick is this? What the, bro, this is freaking worse than mine, but. Turn way. off, I, I oh. messed up. Oh, wait, it's Nasus. Nope. Is this Azir? Is this a bird, but nice try. What, what even is this? Is this a dog? Oh, Warwick. It's Smolder. I was trying to draw a dragon face, right? I've not. So I was trying to draw the mouth and the tongue, but I messed up, so it looks like a nose. But I was like, okay, but flames. And this, this is his mom. Nice try, nice try. Yeah, yeah. Swap it out. You guys are more focused in your second, in your second attempt. I was trying to think of a way to. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna go with Valorant first. No, no, no. It's no, not. it is not Valorant. Wait, are these like dollar signs? Is it a uh, owner? Like uh, close. It, it's not nature, right? Yeah. You got it. Oh, let's go. Let's, let's freaking go. go. I'm warning you. These last two are super troll. Okay. Troll. Oh god. I don't know. I'm struggling to understand Snipes, so. He's got his own view of the world. This one's like my best drawing so far. All right. Nocturne ulting in a team fight. That, that's part of it. It's that's not, part it's of not it. necessarily incorrect. 100 Thieves games five. Yes! Yes, you got it! Oh, you got it. You did it! The last game you played? Yeah. Oh, okay. You're so focused, huh? He's incredibly focused. Okay, what the frick are these? <laughs> it just looks like someone's like sleeping and they had like a nightmare. Bro, what the frick is it? I can't see. <laughs> okay, uh, nightmare. First one. I just say close. Oh, sleep talking. No talking, so no. <laughs> Wait, Wait, no. What is this? What is this then? Is it? Is it? Oh, oh, yeah. Bro, he's sleeping. Uh, it, a bad dream. That's a nightmare, bro. <laughs> bro, I, you said okay. close. Like, the last dream you had. Did they get the point? Did they say sure? Woohoo! No, no. you're three of six. Good job. We brought it back. You, you went 50-50. That's <laughs> not bad. Thank you so much for taking time to join me in Draw My LCS Life in Real Life. 
Sniper, Ayla. Thank you again. We'll see you guys next time. See y'all. Bye. <laughs>